Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, Andrea. We're going to stay close to you. You're... Good morning. This is Sister Billy Jean Bishop with Partners in Prayer. All participants are muted. I am filling in for Sister Yvette McClendon today. She was scheduled to lead, but I'm so thankful that God is with us. We prayed for some very urgent requests all through the day, and God has been here in such a very beautiful, beautiful way. There's such an anointing and a gifting of healing uh, for the brokenhearted, those that are bruised, those that are bound, those that are distressed, and, and I, I thank God for it. We've had some very urgent requests come to us, and I, I appreciate it. So as I get started... Um, I just ask the Lord to continue to be with us this hour, the anointing that breaks every yoke. I ask and invite you to pray with me. Uh, the moment we open this call, and if you're listening to the replay uh, or you're on Facebook Live, I invite you to pray. Talk to the Lord. The last hour, God gave me some instruction regarding my beloved prodigals. I'm so thankful when God gives me a personal word. So prepare yourself. Get get ready. Grab a pencil. Grab your Bible. Uh, God is going to speak to us many times. Uh, the answer to the prayers for your prodigals are spoken to the one that is listening, and you may be that very answer to prayer. God may speak to you, step back. God may speak to you, go. He may tell you, he may divinely instruct you in what you're to do. So let's just open this hour with prayer. Lord, I thank you for every participant on Facebook Live. I thank you, God, for all the callers on the line. Together, Lord, we have come before your presence. I ask you, God, for apostolic anointing, a release, continual release of the gifts of the Spirit, Lord, that will edify and build up. If there ever was an hour, Father, that we needed built up, we needed to lean on one another, we need to lift up the shield of faith over one another, it is today. God, you have promised us that all things were worked together for the good to them that love God and are called, called according to the purpose, the purpose of living for you, God, the purpose of hearing you, God. You're the shepherd and your sheep know your voice. I pray you guide and instruct us. I pray, God, as I just step back and step into the anointing that you would use me and speak through me, minister to the hearers, Lord, but let us not just be hearers only, but let us do that which you have called us upon to do, God, for the restoration and return of our backslidden sons and daughters and family members and members of our churches, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you again for joining. I would ask you now, would you please share this? If you believe that God is returning the backslider, would you just hit that share button? There is a reason and a purpose for this because there are hurting mothers and fathers right now today. We've been focusing on the power of a prayer, parent's prayer for all of last week. And this week, we're, we are stepping into wanting what God wants. And the battle is fierce. And there is... Uh, tr a fiery trial that has come upon many of our partners in prayer, uh, families that courtroom situation, custody situations, uh, health issues in intensive care units, and uh, just heartbreaking situations where God alone is the answer. But I'm so thankful that God will guide us and teach us in the Word. We are to go to the Lord. We can trust Him. We can trust His heart. He loves our backsliders more than we could even begin to imagine. Hallelujah. So, I'm just going to teach for a while. And as you share this, um, we're going to gain listeners. And uh, you can give them the prayer call number. All of our callers on the free conference call are muted. And uh, we will unmute you towards the end uh, following Facebook teaching. So, But let me give you just a little bit of announcement as we prepare and as people keep jumping on. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you are a church prayer coordinator and you want your church involved in leading 
prayers for prodigals. We are in day 16. We have many days left. It's not too late. You can join us at any time. But if you are a church prayer coordinator or you would like to approach your prayer coordinator to begin and join us in the 90 days of prayer, uh, I want you to message Donald Long on Facebook. Donald Long. And I believe that... uh, Sister Long is listening. Now I'm going to type in their name. Brother and Sister Long are under the same uh, Facebook. And there it is on my Facebook Live. Write down their name. We want to hear from you. If you are praying with a group, the Hope Ministries from the Pentecostals of Alexandria, they want to know. They want to connect you with tools and resources. And there is power in unity. And so as our churches grow across America, even overseas, God is responding. Remember, this isn't about uh, how we do this. It's about who we are praying to. The God of heaven has called and summoned this 90 days of prayer. God himself has called intercessors together, and he is uniting praying people more and more every day. Uh, Brother Long reported to us last Uh, Last night, while we went to the prayer meeting, that there's 35 states involved. If you would do something for me on the Facebook Live, and if you can go to Facebook Live, for those of you that are on the call, it's on my page, Billie Jean Bishop. Type the state where you are praying from. Type it in. If you're praying for backsliders, uh, would you please type in where you're from. If you're a pastor, welcome, welcome. If you're an evangelist, we need you. We need you because God is not only going to restore the backslider, but backsliders are bringing families with them. We need to prepare our churches for the return of the prodigals. We need to prepare Bible studies for them. We need to prepare fellowship and support for them. We need to make sure that our backsliders are loved and cared for and we journey with them in the restoration process they are being restored 27 countries brother our sister long that is powerful powerful so if you're a partners in prayer or you are praying with the for the prodigals please type in your state and if you're a prayer coordinator please reach out to donald long at hope ministries god has united us there's power in unity And I've said this this seems to be our theme for spring 2021. We're better together. Bear ye one another's burdens. God hears the uh, newest saint of God's prayers. God hears you when you're a sinner pray. But there is something powerful that shakes the heavens and releases when we begin to bind and to loose and to pray the word of God together. We are using the book by Dr. James Banks, 90 Days of Prayer. We don't go word for word. Uh, Many of our leaders have prayed. They've sought the Lord and God's given them a word. I'm going to try with the help of the Lord to focus on this week's theme because I believe that it pertains to many of you, many of you. And if you're a first time caller, welcome. If you're a first time listener, welcome. And do put in your states uh, where you're from. Praise the name of Jesus. If you're a backslider, we welcome you. We've been waiting for you. This is not the same church that you left. This is a church that's ready, like the Father's house. We have been earnestly expecting and watching and waiting and praying for you. We have been calling your name before the Lord. There is room at the Father's table. We've been saving your chair. We've been looking for you. We've been weeping in the altar. We have been fasting in obedience to the sovereign call that God has called the prodigals back. We are positioning ourselves for you and for those you love, those that you're bringing with you. You don't have to leave your friends behind. When God renews you and refreshes you with the gift that he has never taken away from you, 
and you begin to break in that heavenly pure language as God renews you, as God restores you back to the Father's house. You are his covenant child, and God has a plan and a purpose, but it begins with the journey of repentance. There is a gift of repentance that is coming to you, backslider, and God has sent out his voice, and you've been hearing him in dreams and in visions. You've been hearing him. God's been positioning witnesses around you. I just want to encourage everyone that if you are a backslider or if you are struggling in your faith God has his strong hand upon you his arm has been extended and I want you to know that the people of the name of Jesus Christ we're ready the church of the most living God we are ready we're ready for you we're ready to support you we've been living for God for many years God has sustained us God has kept us and that same keeping power is going to keep you it's going to envelop you it's going to sustain you the saints of God that have remained faithful in the house of prayer don't judge you we weep and rejoice with the angels when a sinner comes home we rejoice and we begin the celebration when a prodigal returns whether it's my prodigal or whether it's your prodigal whether it's from a family across the waters or it's a family that we may never ever meet we rejoice with every returned prodigal prodigal we celebrate we are the bride of christ and we are positioned to weep between the porch and the altar we're going to help them on their journey home we're not going to judge we're not going to look down at you we're going to sustain you and love you and encourage you and pray for you thank you jesus oh my i feel such an anointing on in these words come home come home son of god come home daughter of god we're waiting we're waiting we're reaching we're looking for you we're going into the streets saying jesus lead me to a backslider let me give them a word of hope let me give them a word of encouragement and we're encouraging you my brothers and my sisters we are in this together i have beloved prodigals i carry in my heart the names of prodigals we have them in our prayer jar at our church at hope springs in leesville louisiana i carried that prayer jar with me to the Pentecostals of Alexandria last night and we gathered together and prayed don't despise the day of small gathering saints of God more that be with us than be against us there is a multitude of intercessors there is a voice crying out from the earth unto heaven and heaven has responded God has opened up a space of time because of grace because of mercy and he has sovereignly called the backsliders home i just want to stop a moment i want to pray for our pastors i want you to call your pastor and your pastor's wife i want you to call the name of your prayer leader before the lord because they are stepping on the front lines as the enemy is trying to cling and pull them back into the gates of hell see the battering ram of prayer is going to beat against the gates of hell and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against the battering ram of persistent prevailing prayer what that means is the gates of hell are not coming against us we are going against the gates of hell and they will not be able to keep our prodigals captive and held in bondage i if i have ever spoken a truer word i'm speaking it today the gates of hell are coming down they're crumbling and we are pursuing and taking back what God has given us God gave us their arrows in our quiver their seeds they're our children and we have never seen the righteous our righteous children begging for bread they might be begging for bread and in poverty financially but God is reaching to restore them spiritually to call them back from hell's gates to call them back unto the 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 relationship they may be called back in relationship with god before they even are called back in relationship with the church or with you be patient be patient intercessor it's worth the wait waiting on the lord is not inactivity
It is being persistent. It is being determined. It is praying on purpose. It is praying the word of God. It is fasting like you've never fasted before. It is crying out. It is going to the prayer room, to the altar of your your church, your local church. How long has it been since you went to your prayer room at your church, invited somebody to join you if needed, and began to weep and pray for the backsliders in your local city, your camp? county, your state, across the waters. God will use you in intercession to travail between the porch and the altar. Will you be willing? Will you be willing to go to the prayer room? Perhaps you cannot leave your home today. Perhaps that you are praying right in your home. That is your family altar. There's one altar to the Lord. He sees all of us in the holy place. But there are locations that we need to build an altar. Jacob built an altar. And the angels ascended and descended. And he battled with the angel till the early morning hours. How long has it been since you prayed in the night season and wept tears and cried out and began to pray the word of God and began to bind and to loose and take the tools that God has taught you? You don't have to be a seasoned intercessor to lift your prayers at the altar. Brother Garner said at the last hour, the fire is continually burning upon the altar. And God is ready to consume and to forgive and to release and to restore. I did not mean to go into such a lengthy introduction, but I sense the anointing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for my pastor today. I pray for Wesley Manning and Sister Charlotte Manning. I pray, O oh God, for our church. I pray for the prayer that has been made in that house, Lord God, in Leesville, Louisiana. I lift my voice and pray for every prayer coordinator and every pastor in America and across the waters to arise and be aware of what you are doing. God, you have called us to the altar. You have called us to make intercession with weeping. You have called us, Lord, to declare your word. I pray for every evangelist to begin to preach the prodigal home. I pray, O oh God, for every returned prodigal to begin to share their testimony. It will be as fire shut up in their bones, whether it has been one month or 20 years that they were called back from hell's grave. And God, now they are renewed. I pray, God, that they would be compelled to type out a Facebook testimony or go live or go to their church or to arise in their prayer group. God, as they prepare, Lord God, their testimony, God, they will overcome, oh God, by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. I pray, God, that you would unite our voices together. Let there be a testimony, oh God, that will rock the earth, oh God, of every man, woman of, of God that has been brought back and restored and renewed. Let the preacher arise within them, God. Let us, oh God, as those that have been kept, Lord, those that have been watched watching and waiting for the return of the backsliders. Let us arise with great faith and testimony that you are able to keep us, Lord. You're able to keep us from falling. God, we just declare this into the atmosphere today in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unite the preachers. Unite our leadership. Call them. Knock on their heart's door. Let the preachers begin to talk amongst each other about having prayer for the backslider, doing something that will will launch a prayer that will continue until Jesus calls us home. A fiery red hot prayer, praying the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that's going to avail much, that's going to have great anointing and great power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing that breaks the yokes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, don't let us ever be the same. From this Friday morning on, God, let there be a shift. Let there be a change. Oh, God, train us. You said in your word that you teach us my hands to war. Teach us how to warfare and in intercession. Show us what pleases you, God. Help us, Lord, to line up and follow you into battle as the Lord of hosts. As the King of kings, God, you have a banner, Lord God, and you are leading us into battle. God, there's a war cry, and we cry out today on this Friday. Friday morning, April the 16th, 2021. Oh God, he that is preparing for war, brothers and sisters, the Bible says he entangles himself not with the affairs of this life. 
There are some things that can wait. There are some things that you need to set aside and enter into the battle. Use your weapon of praise. Use your weapon of the word. Use the weapon of worship. Turn on praise music. Open the door. Tell the devil to get out. Get out with all his lies and accusations and discouragement and depression. Get out. Tell him to take every imp with him. Tell him to take his voice. Cut off his head as David cut off Goliath's head. And we as children of God will rush in behind and continue to battle the giants in our family's lives. I feel the preacher upon me, but I am also praying in intercession. Are you traveling with me? Are you praying with me? This is the day that the Lord hath made. This very day, this year, 2021, God has prepared. Why have we gone through such fiery, fiery trials? God is building something in us. He is investing in us. He is fortifying us. Be fully armored with the full armor of God. We have got to go into battle prepared and follow the daily instructions that God gives us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can do this together. Whether you feel like you're a private in this army or a general, God has generals and majors and privates, and it's all because of experiences of fiery trials. It's wartime experience. You want to learn this? You want to learn to battle in intercession? Find an old intercessor. She might be a widow. She might be someone that sits at home alone and begins to pray and intercede just her and the lover of her soul, and she's praying for you. Come alongside her. I just, I can't get away from this, Sister uh, Long. When I went to the POA Monday, and Sister Vestalane Mangan stepped up and greeted us, and it's, it's, you can see it on a video, something shifted, something changed. It was as if a general rode in to the battle, our, our general with our commanding general beside her, and the enemies took notice, and they have fled. They're running. They're running. They're fleeing. We have sent them fleeing north, south, east, and west. We have power with God. We have power in prayer. We are his soldiers. You may be a foot soldier. We need you. We need you. If you don't have a prayer list, I'll give you a prayer list. If you need somebody to pray for, I've got hundreds and hundreds of names I can share with you. I will not divulge their private information, but I can give you names, and God knows who they are. And as we come into the presence of the Lord, and we pass through the five pillars of who God is, as He uh, is declared as the everlasting Father, and as He is turning the hearts of the children to the fathers, and the hearts of the children, the, the hearts of the fathers back unto the children, as we call Him the Prince of Peace, as we declare and walk past that pillar that He is the mighty God, He's the Counselor, Hallelujah! And as we enter into the candlestick that is burning, and we pass into that coming into the holy place, and we make our petitions known before God. We are standing shoulder to shoulder, a multitude of voices. We are marked by prayer. We get up in the morning thinking about prayer. We get up thinking about who we are praying for. People are coming to our minds. Even in the night season, people's faces are coming before the intercessors. And God is saying, lift your voice. And I believe that the Lord is taking the stress out of this. You begin to pray, and, and there is a loosing and releasing. It's happening. It's effective. Miracles are being released, not because of who we are, but because of who He is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. Get engaged. Don't just be a hearer only. Get engaged. Get engaged. Pray for your prodigals by name, but make sure you're adding to your name. We're all in this war together. Hallelujah. We're on the battlefield with the Lord. Hallelujah. And that battlefield, I was sharing this with Sister Diane yesterday. That battlefield is holy to the Lord. Take off your shoes because this is holy ground. When we commune with the Lord, come before him. Come before him declaring who he is and what he means to you what he means to you, and declare that you know that his arm is not short, 
that he cannot save. His ear is not deaf that he cannot hear. Declare, respect the Lord today. Respect who he is. Worship him for who he is. God already knows what your prodigal needs. He, he knows right where they are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is moving. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get to our devotion today. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're in the presence of the Lord. He says, ask, 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 and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are in warfare. But the Lord will take us aside from time to time and make sure that our wounds are have oil poured in them and that we have a time of training, a time of preparation. So if you will give me uh, attention for the next few minutes. We have been in prayer since the call opened. We have been in intercession before the Lord. God is teaching us to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Week three, wanting what God wants in our book. Sister Linda Brown referred to it yesterday, but I want to go back and pull out some really keys for the next week till next Thursday when we change into week four. The The focus was, uh, but if we're not careful, we can get up caught up in the world's ways of thinking that even some of our prodigals are very successful. They might have the right job. They may not be bound by alcoholism, but... Uh, or in jail and we want to lift up every one of our families no matter what circumstances they find their backsliders in but remember there's an eternal plan and we don't want to be confused that good success means salvation because God has an eternity uh, a plan he has a view for their souls he sees the the beginning and the ending and God is investing in our prodigals what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? That's found in the book of Mark. If any of our children are successful and they still remain backslidden or they don't know the Lord, uh, what good is it in view of what the scripture that I just read? If they're separated from God for eternity, what kind of future is that? And that's the call that God's put in us. We are to turn up the heat of prayer. Turn up the heat. Turn it up. Find a place. Come aside. Pray more than you've ever prayed. You can't pray too much. Nothing matters more than getting right with God, Dr. Banks says in his book. If I'm trying to shape the future of our children with anything less in mind, we could miss the mark by a mile. But if we aim for what God wants, that's our whole and week's focus now until next Thursday, praying, God, what do you want? What do you want? What is your will for me? What is your will for my children, Lord, as I pray? Help me pray into uh, the prayer room. Help me to speak the words into their lives. What is the will of God? The will of God is that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. We always have a reason to hope, but there's warning from the word of God. When you're the parent of a prodigal child, you may feel like you have to settle for the second best when it comes to their future. Maybe you've been keeping score with other kids his or her age, and it seems like that your prodigal is left behind. Maybe your plans haven't worked out. Maybe you're disappointed and discouraged. Disappointment can set a wall between you and your backslider. Don't allow that wall of disappointment to come up. Ask God to bring it down. Ask God for you to look at them with the love of God. Maybe your plans haven't worked out. Uh, God once promised his people in the book of Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. See, God has plans for your backslider. He has plans for you. It's an eternal plan. He's the author and finisher of your family's faith. He's writing your story if you will come in line with him. Plans to prosper you, the Bible says, and not, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And his heart today, brothers and sisters, has not changed. The future he promises isn't lifted, limited, excuse me, <clears throat> to this lifespan, to this lifetime. Not only can God open doors for our children on this earth, he can also open heaven. 
open heaven. And that's what we've been focusing on our praying today. Lord, open heaven. Open heaven. Open up the eternal plan and purpose for us and for our families. In Jesus' name. Our prayer needs to be, Father, help me to want what you want for my child. Help him to love you most of all. When that prayer is answered, then your son or daughter will be truly happy and have all that they need. Not just, not just for a few years on this earth, but for every day to come. Every day to come. Stretching on beyond forever. How powerful prayer is. Prayer answered will stretch on beyond forever. I want that to sink in. Prayer answered stretches on beyond forever. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Praise the Lord. We have a hope. We have a future. Our prodigals have a future. God has a plan for them. Now they may make different choices, but I want you to understand something. We have a part in helping the the gentle shepherd to go after them, to pursue them, to rescue them. We don't want to be a part of the problem. We want to be a part of that answer to prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you feel the same hope I feel. I hope you are sensing the focus of our prayers today. I hope you are focused and in unity of mind. We are focusing on praying for the backsliders at this 10 o'clock hour. That's what we're focusing in. God knows your need before you ask him. If you will humble yourself in submission and begin to pray for the backslider, God is going to release something powerful in your life. I know many of you have urgent needs. For at this point in this time, we come before the King, making our petitions known to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's shift into day 16. I'm going to leave you with a short version of the book. If you don't have the book, 90 Days of Prayer for Prodigals, please order it by Dr. Banks. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we're trying to equip you. We're trying to encourage you through the Word of God. We're teaching you uh, to pray the Word of God. And for you old-timers that have been praying for many, many, many years, this is still a good tool. It's a good book. You will know how to pray for the backsliders that God has laid on your heart. And remember, we're doing this for unity. If we all come into the place of the altar, praying the same word of God, focusing on the same thing, heaven responds to unity. Uh, the scripture that opens on day 16 is 1 Corinthians 10, verses 13. You can turn to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And this, um, this is an encouragement. It's not the King James Version, so I'm going to read it as the author has put it in the book. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it our prodigals they have too many close calls lately i have prodigal requests that that uh, prodigals have been in near death experiences we've had a backslider take his own life and these things break your heart they do they break my heart but i quickly go to the lord and say god you are sovereign and i've lost a prodigal he was just a few months away from serving God, and he went out into eternity through a car accident. I know what it's like to question were they saved. I know what it's like. What could I have done? But God, in his sovereignty, revealed to me that he had my prodigal, and he took him to the shepherd's house to be with him, that he spared his soul. He allowed certain things to happen. But I am to fervently, continually plead the blood and pray a blood covering over my children and make sure that I am not only in right standing with God, but as much that is lies within power within me to have right relationship with them. 
So the author goes on to say, The hot breath of temptation has been closing in and breathing down my child's neck. Do you have a daughter that's been pulled away by a boyfriend? Some of our parents have children that are living with the same sex. It's hard. It's a hard journey, but it's not impossible with God. I want to encourage you. There is no temptation, the Bible says in the scripture I just read in 1 Corinthians ten thirteen. What is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But with when you are tempted, when, when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out. So you'll be able to withstand it. Hallelujah. So our prodigals in, in day 16, they, they take their own path. The scripture talks about their feet slipping. They talk about the snare of the fowler. They, they talk about, this in this uh, chapter here, about the, the pull of the world, the lust of the flesh. Um, I, I have read Dr. James Banks' second book called Hope, and it's the story of the return of his son. Oh, the temptations this family went through. The family, the parents, Dr. Banks and his wife, were tempted to give up. They were tempted to be angry and to be bitter. But they chose the path of life, and they chose. Thank God they did, because we wouldn't have such a journey, a book, for us to journey and to know that there are other parents that are going through the same things that we go through. It's really difficult to watch a prodigal walk off, to, to be lost into the sea of the muck and the mire and the temptations and the destructive. God spoke something to me, and I just can't stay in the lesson today, but I want to share this. God spoke something to me yesterday. He said, prodigals are not casualties. They're not casualties. Listen to me. Yes, we're in a war. But we're going to be able to pour oil and wine in their wounds. They're wounded. They're wounded. They're wounded by the temptations of, of their own flesh. They're wounded by, and they're led by spirits of rebellion. They're led away by curses that have been put upon them by walking in this world's ways and falling for the world's devices. Their eyes have been blinded, but the Lord is saying, I'm opening their eyes. They're not casualties. They're not piled up alongside of the road to be forgotten. Rispa, she beat the buzzards away from the dead bodies of her sons. Read about Rispa in the Bible. Powerful, powerful analogy to pray, to pray, to pray for our sons and daughters. Even though they seem dead to, to any hope, any, any uh, semblance of wanting to desire to be holy as God is holy. Any, uh, any hope, any flicker that they want to come back to the house of God. Don't. Don't despise those days where they seem like they're just uh, rolling in their own sins and in their own vomit and there's no way out. They are not a casualty. They're not a casualty as long as they have breath. They have a father that is pursuing them. And we have a church that is praying for them. Hallelujah. They may be wounded. They may be tempted. They may be pulled away. But there is a way out. That's what today's focus is. That's the word of God for you today. There is a way out. You need to pray that they can avoid temptation. You need to pray that as they pull their sleeves up and they go to inject heroin into their arm again, that God's spirit will come upon them and to bind the powers of darkness and spirits of uh, drug use and abuse as they begin to walk away from their spouses and fall into adultery as they continue to walk in ungodly, unholy relationships. You need to pray that God would give them courage to avoid and walk out of the temptations that are coming in their lives. You don't need to preach to them the way out. You need to pray them out. You need to fast them out. Some things, this kind only comes by prayer and by fasting. Hallelujah. God is speaking to us today. There is a way out and it is Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is their way out. Hallelujah. He is the living hope. God is speaking to us to encourage us today on day 16 to pray that they help them to resist the devil so the devil will flee from them. That is the word of God. 
Restore our prodigal's faith, God. Restore them, Father. Make them strong. Make them stand firm. Let them become steadfast. I pray that you are continually faithful, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. You are the faithful one. Let me be faithful in prayer. Let me be faithful. Let me tell you, once they are returned, the praying doesn't stop. There's a restoration process. There's a time of discipling the returned prodigal. And God knows it takes a whole church to love them. It takes the involvement of a good pastor and a good pastor's wife. It's going to take you and I. What if my backslider moved into your city. Would you be obedient to ask God to lead you to my son that had moved into your city and taken a job and taken his family? Now my my prodigal's right here in my city. I thank God for that. But would you listen to the voice of the Father? God is moving. God is moving. He's using us. He is using you and he's using I. Won't you get into this warfare? Don't war them with flesh. Don't war them with quarreling and strife. Don't even try to reason with them, especially when they're not reasonable. But reason them with the word and in prayer. Wrestle down what wrestles against them. God is faithful. God, help me be faithful. We praise you, Lord, that your love will never fail my backslider. Nor will your love ever fail me. Your salvation will last forever, Dr. Banks says. And your righteousness will never fail never fail. Open up your Bible, write down Isaiah 51 and 6. Make that your prayer today. We put our children, Lord, in your hands. I put myself and my future into your hands, Lord. I ask you that your grace will set her free from the temptations of sin. Every one of us are tempted. Every one of us could do better in living for God, but we can't do it. We can't do it on our own strength. We can't get good to get God. We've got to be born again of the water and the spirit. You must be born again. It isn't a church denomination. It's a plan of redemption. It's a plan for a way out. God has given us a way out. They're watching you. Our little grandbabies are watching you. They're watching how you live for God. They're watching how you handle trouble and sickness and challenges. They're watching you. My prodigals prayed for me when I had COVID and my husband were so sick. My prodigal called me on the phone and prayed for me. And God released a healing, a healing touch that turned me back on the course of good health. My prodigal. God hears them. Hallelujah. It is almost 11 o'clock. We've been in prayer. We've been praying corporately. Hallelujah. But I felt impressed to share the um, the uh, prophecy that was spoken at prayer meeting last night. Sister Sherry Parrott at our 8 o'clock hour had written it down and shared it with me. And I want to read it because it's it's something that you need to allow to saturate your mind and allow the Word of God. Those of you that are apostolic understand the gift, the manifestation of tongues and interpretation of tongues that happens in our, our gatherings, in our prayer meetings. And this is one of the gifts of the Spirit. And the purpose of the gifts of the Spirit is to build up and edify the body of Christ. So I want to read these words that were recorded last night at the Pentecostals of Alexandria. And if you would just stop for a moment and allow yourselves to be ministered to by the prophetic word. I say to you this hour, look to me, for I am your hero. I'm on a rescue mission. I love your prodigal, and I love them more than you do. I have heard your prayers, and I've heard your supplications, and they are bottled up in places that no man, no, nothing can ever get to. 
but know that you're about to embark on the greatest revival of the returning prodigals that this world has ever seen. I am speaking to them even now. I have turned my face to them because I love you and I have heard your prayers. I have heard your intercession. I have heard you praying. I have heard you crying. I have heard your sighing. I have heard your groaning in the morning. Oh, I tell you this hour, yes, I am looking at your prodigals. I am looking to them. I am looking them in the face. They will have a picture of me. They will know that I died for them, that I died for their sins, that I shed my blood for them. So prepare for the greatest revival. They are returning home. They are coming home. They are coming to the Father's house. When they come home, they will run. They will run fast. They will bring a great work. They will bring many with them with them they will bring many many will be behind them the lukewarm will either catch up and come with them or they will be lost but my love is pure wholesome merciful my love is with grace my grace is sufficient praise the lord praise the lord and if you would like those written words message me and i will send you uh the uh the prophetic word that sister parrot sat down and listened to and recorded we need to share this we need to let others know this word is for his bride he is desiring to build up the body of christ edifying us he has heard our prayers he has saw us weeping he has heard us and he saw us in the early morning hours and the part that just stirred my heart was i am going to look them in the face and they will have a picture of me they will know they will know that I died for them Jesus is their Savior Jesus is the God who hears and answers prayer he ever liveth to make intercession for us praise the name of Jesus what I would like to do now is um, open the uh, prayer call um, Brother Garner, if you could unmute folks. All participants are unmuted. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I I appreciate that. God showed me something and reminded me of something this morning that I want to give you. And I will, if you want this uh, prayer, I will copy it and send it to you. But this is from a book. And I am doing this because of the powerful... Uh, attack that has come against our prodigals yes the enemy when he comes in like a flood the Lord is going to raise a standard and what is that standard that standard is prayer it's prayer so this is uh, labeled prayer of renunciation renunciation and the reason that I'm using this as we prepare to pray and I want you to pray the words along with me, is Sister Shelley, the last hour, she said, don't label your children. Don't call them an alcoholic. Don't call them a drug addict. Don't call them unemployed. Don't call them broken. Don't call them. Begin to speak over them and, and renounce what has taken place in their life. Begin to call them forth as sons and daughters of God. So I'm going to read some prayers from the book Prayers That Rout Demons by John Eckerd, and it is powerful. And I'm going to pray these words, and I want you to pray along with me. Lord Jesus, we come before you, God, with the authority and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, through the power of the name of Jesus. I plead the blood and pray a blood covering over everyone that is participating in this hour of prayer. And God, we stand before you, and according to the word of God, we declare these prayers, O God. We declare these prayers for the binding and loosing and releasing of our children, Lord. God, I renounce all lust and perversion and immorality and uncleanliness, impurity 
impurity and sexual sin that has bound our prodigals in the name of Jesus. I renounce all witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and occult involvement in the name of the Lord Jesus that has come to our prodigals. I renounce on any ungodly soul ties and immoral relationships in the name of Jesus. Lord, for our prodigals, I renounce all hatred, anger, resentment, revenge, retaliation, unforgiveness, and bitterness. God, even if that bitterness lies within me, I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we forgive any person who has ever hurt our backsliders, who has ever hurt me, disappointed me, abandoned me, abandoned my prodigal, mistreated them, or rejected me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I renounce all addiction to drugs, alcohol, or any legal or illegal substance that has our prodigals bound in the name of the Lord Jesus. I renounce all pride, haughtiness, arrogance, vanity, any ego, any disobedience, and any rebellion in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, together as we pray, we renounce all envy, all jealousy, all covetousness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we renounce and stand before your holy place. We renounce and we will not accept fear or unbelief or doubt that our prodigals will return in the name of the Lord Jesus. We renounce all selfishness, all self-will, all prayerlessness, Lord, all self-pity, all self-rejection, all self-hatred, and any self promotion in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we renounce and God declare today, God, that any and all ungodly thought patterns and belief systems, we renounce it. We shed it, Lord. We reject it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, I renounce un any ungodly covenants, any ungodly oaths or or vows that have been made by my backslider or by myself or the generation that has preceded me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Renouncing is something I'm learning. I haven't really fully arrived, but I will not accept these curses. These are the fruits of the flesh. These are demonic activity that draws us away to be jealous for the the oppression, for addictions, for sorcery, witchcraft, divinations. These are all things of the darkness of this world, and we reject it in the name of Jesus. We, we loose and release the light and the love of the Lord. We will pray. We will declare. We will walk in the fruits of love, righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. We will, O oh God, allow your Spirit to purify and cleanse us. We will declare that our child has been given the gift of repentance. We will be with long suffering. God see them return to the father's house. Even though they're a long way off, Lord, we will not allow a single day to go by where we are not praying for them, where we are not believing for them, where we're not renouncing the powers and the attack of the enemy. God, we are reversing the curse. We are reversing. We're standing before your throne of mercy. Oh God, call them to personal repentance. Lord, I stand as a priest and a minister over my family. My husband and I stand and declare today that our children are protected by the hedge and the covering of the blood of the Lamb. God, protect them from the evil one. Let them not be deceived or led astray, God, but let the truth that endures to the generation that follows me, O oh God, be kept, Lord. And God, we'll train them. We'll train them up. Those babies we're going to train them up in the way of the Lord. And when they are old, they're not going to depart. But, oh God, let us be in, in the work of God as we speak over our prodigals. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I, I will send this to you. This may seem like, um, it may seem different to some of you to renounce the curses. But I believe God wants us to engage in a great combat. Some of you are on the front lines right now and you're fighting for your lives. You are fighting. You're fighting every day. It seems like that there is no break. 
but understand that we're driving back the for forces of darkness and the Lord himself has led us into this battle. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I like to say it this way, like a flood, the Lord's going to raise a standard against the enemy. He's going to flood the enemy like he did Pharaoh and his army. You're going to cross over with your family to a safe place. Your family's going to live for God and rejoice on the other side of the Red Sea. Your family is going to know the Lord as God drowns the enemy behind you. There is an enemy pursuing you, but don't fear, child of God. God has got you. He sees you. God, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you for every household, Lord. Every name, every ear that is listening, you see where they're sitting right now. You know how many years that these elders have prayed for their children. And you've stored up every prayer. Pour out those prayers, Lord. Pour them out, Lord. God, let us invest and continually to declare that they are set free. Let the anointing break every yoke. God, we fight the prince of the air over our cities. Oh, God, we stand in authority and command in the name of Jesus, let the backslider go so that they can come into a season of grace and mercy where the Lord is taking out the heart of stone and giving them a softened heart of flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The song says this is how we overcome, but it's more than a song. It's more than, than a song in the house of praise, and I love that song. I do. I enjoy that song. But this is in the battlefield, in the presence of God, following his word to you. You may have to forgive somebody today. You may have to stop and discipline yourself and change the way you pray. This war is not going to be won by haphazard praying. This war, you may have to go into a war room, a prayer room, shut yourself away and pray until the Father releases you. Allow the Holy Ghost to pray for you. You want to know the will of God? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray until. Thank you, Jesus. I will go back. It's the top of the hour. I will go back and I will pray for every need. Hallelujah. I'm asking you to share this. We've been in the presence of the Lord. I'm not asking you to share this because this has been a great oratory. We have prayed in the presence of God this morning. I'm going to turn now to the prayer line as I close out Facebook Live. You can dial 563-999. 2833 and we're going to have uh, some time of prayer and you are welcome to join us thank you for allowing me to pray and enter into spiritual warfare with you I don't take this lightly I need you I need you I will not let you fall on the battlefield without reaching to you and helping pull you up Heal the wounds and let's go back into this battle. Let's go back in and fight with the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for us in this last day in the return of the backslider. God bless you. I love each of you. Those of you on the prayer line, remain with me.